Hi, I'm Renaud Monoher from Casper Labs. I'm happy to give you an update from Paris, France. I'm at the RAISE event, which is primarily focused around artificial intelligence. Uh, really excited to be here. Just wanted to give you a little update about the event. Uh, myself and Sham Nagarajan, who's the uh, global head for IBM Consulting on AI governance, just spoke at a panel uh, on unleashing AI governance, and reception was really, really good. Um, in recent polling that IBM has done, 87% uh, of companies want to ensure that they have more trust in their underlying AI systems. And that's where the Casper blockchain as a trust layer is an extremely strong augmentation uh, to these kinds of capabilities. As a result, you know, the vision for Casper Labs and the Casper network was always to find really, really interesting enterprise use cases. And we're really happy that, you know, one of the first products that we're going to create in a SaaS manner is going to be an AI governance product that we're co-building with IBM. Uh, based on conversations that we're having here in Paris, we're really, really excited about the reception and everyone recognizes the need for this underlying technology. The NVIDIA GTC event, which was, if my memory serves, around March 18th, a couple of weeks ago, uh, was incredibly edifying for us. Uh, we actually spent most of the time on the floor talking I think each of us talked to 20 or 30 companies individually, really testing our thesis and messaging. And what became very, very clear is the tamper-proofing nature of our underlying technology and the fact that it fits neatly within an enterprise tech stack are really the most evocative parts of uh, what we're building. And it, it, it really, really helps that we're uh, partnering with IBM to ensure that the product we build really meets the technical muster uh, that enterprises crave and require. Uh, one really big insight that we got is the AI market right now is, is quite chaotic. Terms are used interchangeably. Solutions are given, you know, varying descriptions of, in terms of accuracy, etc. And I think having a clean, refined, clear value proposition in the market uh, is going to highly differentiate us. So really, really looking forward to putting those insights together and ensuring that our product is the best it can be. Development is ongoing. Um, you know, um, as, as the community saw, we first showed the proof of concept of what we developed uh, in November of 2023 on our Gartner webinar. You can still go to our website and view the webinar. So that was way back in November when we demoed that. Coding on that actually had started August of last year. So everything continues. Our uh, business requirements doc is locked down. Our non-functional requirements uh, is locked down. So we're in active development of the underlying SaaS product. Go-to-market, you know, obviously continuously modifies as we get feedback from the market. Uh, but in essence, you know, the three things that we said we'd do, which is end-to-end um, -end data integrity, uh, the ability for multi-party governance, as well as version control, all three of those are still what we're building. So the good news is all the feedback said that we're essentially correct in where we're going. Um, how we message that and how that's prioritized, uh, we, we got a lot of insight uh, into that. Uh, in terms of go-to-market, we, we do have you know multiple signups for our beta program, and we have a few customers that we plan to debut with, uh, with the solution. Uh, there'll be a much more... Look, I can't get into much more detail than that. I, I, I can give a specific number. We, we had about two dozen companies sign up for our beta program off of the uh, uh, Gartner webinar. Actually, about 100 signed up. We qualified about 75 out because, you know, they, they were either a, a Gmail address or, you know, not a real corporate or something like that. So, yeah, for the next two or three months, really, we're heads down focusing on ensuring that we're producing the product. Um, that's of high quality. We're getting as much input from potential customers as possible. And of course, you know, collaborating with IBM, both on development and go-to-market strategy. That's really going to be my focus for the next two months. This and Think, uh, which is uh, IBM's conference in Boston, third week of May, are really the only events um, I have on the horizon in the short to medium term. All the rest of the time, I'm going to be in New York, just heads down, focusing on getting the product out. So effectively, there's no change at all in how Casper or CSPR is consumed, right? We're just giving the choice, do you want to pay it in fiat or do you want to acquire the CSPR yourself? 
CSPR will still be used to pay for the gas, even in a, you know, refund it all model, uh, which increases demand for it. It's, you know, think about it as an AWS credit. But actually giving people the opportunity to pay for it in fiat up front actually really, really expands the potential usage of the underlying public network. I think people have this misconception that because we're selling it as a SaaS product, that means it doesn't affect the public network. That's absolutely untrue. CSPR is still used uh, for gas. It's still used to drive the network. It's just, how do we charge the company? Do we ask them to take CSPR or pay as a SaaS fee? And, you know, SaaS fees are something enterprises are imminently used to. We actually view this as an innovation that could really help drive more transactions to the network. Also why, you know, the Condor release is really, really important because it gives us that ability to ensure that we can charge in a SaaS-based manner.